Welcome to Forgotten Popcorn, where we talk about movies that have made us forget eating our popcorn. Today, we're talking about Silence, 2016, Martin Scorsese. Yeah. I Very mean, good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good movie. Uh, yeah. You want to give a summary of uh, what it's about? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, this is two Jesuit priests, uh, Garupe and Rodriguez. They're pretty much on a, they're in a mission uh, to go find their mentor. Their mentor, which is Liam Neeson in this movie. Uh, so, the main two characters, uh, Andrew Garfield and Adam Driver, incredible. And the whole thing is going to Japan to find their mentor who is supposedly gave up Christianity. Uh, so that's very, very big in the 17th century. Uh, and yeah, let's get down into it. Yeah. What did you think? Because I know this is both our first time watching it. Yeah. I, if anybody's uh, listening uh, or, or whoever's listening, I should say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's the first time we watch a movie uh, that none of us had seen previously. Usually we pick movies that obviously everyone's familiar with, like, you know, like blockbusters and whatever, Interstellar, you know, so on and so forth. So to uh, do a movie like this that where none of us had ever seen it before, it's it's uh, it's a different experience, yeah. right? Like I don't know what to really expect. Uh, here's what I have to say. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll hit this off right away. Uh, the first hour of the movie for me is pretty brutal. I'm not gonna lie. Like there's a lot of like uh, story building in it, which I I like appreciate because it, it comes into play later in the movie. Yeah. But I, I find like. Uh, it's, I think it's a Martin Scorsese like special. He does that quite a bit. I, I noticed like as soon as the the like the second half hit, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, of course. Uh, but it still keeps your interest. I just find like there's a lot of like, you know, here's a here's a village that is uh secretly uh Christian, and you know, obviously for reasons in, in Japan, right? Uh, the whole story's based off of that. Yeah. And so they they sort of build that and uh, you know, um uh damn, I'm group A and uh Rodriguez. Rodriguez, that's yes. it. Sorry, uh, sorry. I just keep on to say Andrew so badly. Uh, <laughs> Rodriguez both like go into this village, right? And they're they're learning about you know how they how they manage to uh, be Christians in secret and how they manage to hide their faith and practice even that because they can't be uh, they can't even have a, a proper church or anything like yeah. you know that the regular stuff that they're used to. Um, where are they from exactly? Where where were they sent from? Was oh, it Portugal? Portugal. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah. yeah. So. You know, it's not the same sort of scenario. And Mm -hmm. uh, there's parts of that building, world building, where I'm like, okay, like I get it. Maybe that's just because like I'm I'm a little bit more familiar with uh, with Christianity a little bit and Mm -hmm. just sort of that's maybe why. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how you felt about it. I I honestly found it was pretty good. I I like the beginning and I like the ending. The the middle part of the movie, I was kind of like, okay, it's a bit drawn out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but the whole beginning, I enjoyed, um, especially because it kind of gives us like a, an input on this, on this, these two characters, the main two characters, which Adam Driver, Andrew Garfield, yeah. um, who are on the quest, right? I found it kind of, for anybody who doesn't know what it's about, who doesn't know like the kind of, um, the kind of crazy, not crazy, but the kind of like, I guess you could say like uh, like lengths Japan went to to kind of not have Christianity inside Japan, then it kind of builds the world around that. And it's very good to see. Yeah. So I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I did hear, though, that Martin Scorsese wanted to do this movie for decades. Yeah, really? Yeah, he was talking about making this movie for a long time because it's a book. Um, yeah, that's right. It's a book and he basically like read about it and he wanted to make it for so long. But in his own words, he wasn't ready yet. He didn't know how to like master his own craft. And I know you mentioned just before, like just before we yeah. started recording that this kind of movie, right? It You need a specific kind of like craft. You need a specific yeah. kind of like, uh, you know, experience. Yeah. There's not a lot of directors who could like pull a movie off like this because yeah. it's hard to tell a story like this. Like, okay, damn, I did <sighs> like Oppenheimer. Damn it. If you're, if you've been long, <laughs> if you've been around long enough on the channel, you oh, know man. that we talk about this movie constantly. Uh, and it will probably still be told until the at least the Oscars. And for God, like, anyways, I'm sorry. If you're a longtime viewer, you knew it was coming. Every episode we mention it. But That's it. it's, you know, it's those types of stories that it takes a special director yeah. to be able to tell a story like that and still keep the viewer intrigued. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, it takes a special cinematographer to do yes. that. Because I looked it up. This movie only won. No, didn't win any Oscars. It was only nominated for one. And that was for cinematography. Mm-hmm. So... 
it, when I when I looked that up and I started to like pay attention more to that because I did get bored a little bit with the story a little bit. You know, it gets a little slow, and uh, so I was like, okay, I'll look around the screen and see you know all the shots and like every single shot is really nice. Yeah. Uh, but we'll come back to that. But ju- yeah, just to go back to the director, like Martin Scorsese. I mean, like come on, like right. Yeah. The only other director I could think who can maybe do this is Mel Gibson. But other than that, I mean, that's yeah. just based off of like who he is, and we know like he he's a big religious guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. And if you've guys seen the episode, go watch it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. Is there any other director in your mind that could do this? Honestly, no. It's like, as other as other than Mel Gibson, not really. Because yeah. like you said, there's a very big religious aspect to this movie. Um, and to really want to play that on that religious part and not kind of downgrade it is very hard. Yeah. Um, especially like when you talk about Hacksaw Ridge, which we did a whole episode on, so go check it out. Um, but pretty much on that episode, we were speaking about how, yes, religion is a whole portion of it, but it doesn't feel like religion is a whole portion of it. No, right? Yeah. And like in this movie, yes, you know religion is pretty much the whole reason of the movie. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it just was two people going on a mission. That's, that's how it felt like at the beginning. Yes, of course, you know, they're priests. You know, they're going to, you know, on a mission. They're missionaries uh, trying to spread the word of God. But it, it just didn't feel like that. It just didn't feel like that to me at, at a certain point until, um, I mean, sorry, excuse me. It felt like that throughout the beginning because, yeah. you know, they're priests, you know, they're going around. And then as mm-hmm. soon as maybe like about halfway through the film, a bit before halfway, it didn't feel like that anymore. You know, they no, were, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't feel like they were they were passing the word of God. They were just two people on a mission. Yes. You know, yeah. um, and you did bring up um, Hacksaw Ridge, right? Uh, and Andrew Garfield. This is same year yeah. as Hacksaw Ridge plays very religious character. Yeah. Not the first know. time for him. We talked about it, uh, yeah. obviously. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great actor. Uh, I, I, well, I want to touch on the story first before I touch on, uh, yes. you know, both, <laughs> both uh, Adam Driver and uh, Andrew Garfield. Liam Neeson. Yes. I mean, whew, like, that's crazy. But uh, I don't know. The story, you're right. Like, at one point it switches, you mm-hmm. know, and it, it's it's very easy to get stuck in that, like, religious uh, aspect or, or really trying to drive home the religion part of it. Uh in a movie, obviously, that's surrounded by it. Mm-hmm. But if you strip away, you know, Christianity, Buddhism, and all that, it's, it's you just take it for what it is at face value. There's a lot of like more symbolic meanings behind it. I mean, that's I guess what religion is in a certain extent, and yeah. is true fashion, right? I would say, oh man, what part of the movie to me really took that switch? I would say once Ferrera. Uh, they kind of glimpse at him a little bit here and there, and then he disappears for quite a while. Yeah. And you then you, you start to sense like a little bit of a switch in the story. And then it's when they lose, uh, when the two, when Grupe and uh, Rodriguez separate, that's really when yeah. you're like, okay, like now we're like focusing on, on uh, Andrew, which by the way, what a decision from uh, Scorsese to like, you have to pick. Obviously, it's it's a it's a, off a book, so like he doesn't get to choose necessarily how the story goes. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, you still have to you know pick the right actor, and then you have like such a star-studded cast where you're like, okay, now I'm gonna do all this for Andrew, and you're like, hey, what about Adam Driver? He's like a really yeah. good actor too. So, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about Adam Driver a little bit after. But the, yeah, I feel like that point is where you kind of forget about the religion part of it a little bit. I, yeah. It's still prominent, you know, especially when he's locked away there in, yeah. in the in the camp in, in Nagasaki. It is near it. Yeah, this, he yeah. said near, near, near it. Is, yeah, yeah, or east Nagasaki. Yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. it, it's very interesting. That whole part where he's, I don't know what you think of uh, sort of that whole segment, pretty much like the entire time that he's stuck away, trapped, like how it was done from a, uh, I mean, it was fine. I, like, it's we're not talking about a perfect movie, right? So oh, it's yeah. it's it was fine. I thought it was okay. It was just him being able to see the people that follow him, right? Or not him specifically, but um, like God, yeah. Um, which to a certain point basically feels like uh, they're kind of following Jesus, yeah. You know, which I think That's, is kind yeah. of. Uh, I think at one point you kind of do feel like that when he's looking at the reflection of himself in the pond. Yeah, that's right? a very the, interesting scene. Yeah. yeah, he gets he gets sold out. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's a very very interesting. But yeah, that develops in his character throughout mm-hmm. the uh, throughout the film. Uh, he becomes this this almost this prophet to these people because yeah. there's no one else uh, there to yeah. basically represent them because they're they're getting well 
killed for for who they uh, the religion that they want to practice right Mm -hmm. and uh i find like it's it weighs heavily on his character throughout the entire movie and then really up until like pretty much the very end when he finally meets Frere again and then there he's like you you have to like you have to stop this like and then uh it's uh you the scene where it's like the last scene basically mm-hmm. uh before we get that nice uh voice of god uh at the, at the end there i don't even know who the explorer is necessarily i, I yeah, but no uh yeah, anyways right before that before he basically gives up on 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 the uh on christianity and mm-hmm. steps on the uh on on the face yeah uh he has to basically do that he has to sacrifice himself so that he could save the people who are being hung upside down. That's it. So, and when that scene was occurring, I don't know about you, but in my, I, I well, in my head and out loud, because I live alone, I was just kind of yelling at the TV going, you have to sacrifice them. <laughs> it's so obvious. How have you not done this yet? Yeah. Like, I just kept saying that. And then finally it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I have to. It's like, really? You really, you realize that now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, come on. I don't know. I, 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 I just. <laughs> I find, I'm like, I agree. Because like, I mean, okay. To a certain point, um, it's like, how religious you are i think it really plays onto the fact of this movie yeah um for example my parents have seen this movie it's one of their favorite movies you know um my parents are very very religious people um and if you are religious or you really follow christianity specifically or maybe even buddhism um or even just honestly any religion if you're very very like uh, if you have a lot of faith and you really follow your religion a lot this movie will make sense a lot to you you know, like, mm-hmm. um, uh, I don't want to get too much in specifics into our own religions or anything like that. Um, but pretty much it, like something I, 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 I'm assuming really is if you're going into this movie, really thinking like, like as a, as a very strong Catholic, for example, yeah. um, you know, you will very much connect, I find with, oh, yeah. uh, with, um, Andrew Garfield, because there's to a certain point, there's a lot of faith that you have to have to be just in any part of religion, right? It's, it's believing without seeing. Yeah. Right. And um, and the whole thing for this movie is he's trying to believe in God, but mm-hmm. God's not talking back to him. Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's how can he see all these people being tortured or like put through this whole thing? And there's God's not even speaking to him and telling him like, yeah, you know, like I'm on your side or anything. Like, yeah. doesn't speak, doesn't do anything, doesn't communicate. And that's I think Andrew Garfield's like, well, uh, Rodriguez's biggest like turning point. You mm-hmm. know, it's like he never spoke to me. And as soon as he digs, he does speak to him. It's like that's when he switches about, you know, it's like yeah. he's no longer uh, religious. Well, quote unquote religious. Well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Yeah, it, it's hard not to dive into uh, religion when the whole movie is <laughs> a, a movie about religion. And yeah, and, and uh, that brings up my next question: How do you feel they represented the film was representing uh, both uh, religions? Because I mean, it, it I find obviously a big focus is on Christianity, but uh, we yeah. still get a lot of talk of Buddhism because it's it's what is being. Uh, taught right yeah so it's i find at least from my perspective it was pretty well uh i don't know enough about each religion necessarily to be confident in saying that it's accurate but i can say that i think it was done in a respectful way and i I feel like the manner it was done it wasn't really uh saying one was better than the other it was just saying Mm -hmm. that this is the way one was done and it's based off history too so like there's only so much you can do to change a story right i mean it's that's it's a book too so you yeah. can't change it uh you can you can interpret that's really all you can do um well for me for example um i took a course on japanese uh history mm-hmm. when i was uh in college and pretty much the their buddhism or buddhism in japan is um there's a there's a separate religion in japan which is called shinto so shinto is a bit more modern so in the 17th century when this movie was taking place i don't think shinto was there it's just buddhism um, but the whole thing is that nature is your God, uh-huh. right? So, um, like that plant is your God, uh, the sun is your God, the wind is your God, you know? Right, so like there's yeah. gods for every kind of nature or specific nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, uh, Liam Neeson really points to that factor. Well, um, what's his name? Um, Ferreira. Ferreira, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking of a scene right now. <laughs> yeah. Even, even, yeah, go, go, go. He's like, it's- you know, he's saying like the sun, the sun God, that's the God. It comes up every day. And says hi to them, you know, pretty much or is always there for them, you know. And then he also points over to the fact he goes over to, um, well, he points over to uh, Andrew Garfield or mm-hmm. um, Rodriguez and pretty much says, your God, you're pretty much the, the son of your God died. Mm-hmm. You know, our like for Buddhism, our God wakes up every day. Yeah. Every day he comes, every day he leaves. Every day he comes, every day he leaves. You know, 
Um, and I think they did a really good job on showing that because mm-hmm. I mean he really well they really well explain specifically in I guess Japanese architecture they really build around nature and they they did that really well you know they grabbed a lot yeah. of uh, Japanese architecture they did a really good job with the sets and everything yeah. from Japanese culture um, so that was really well done I find uh, specifically like you said that mix of like showing that not one's better than the other, but this is just what they represent in this yeah. country specifically, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which 100%. Is good. Yeah. There is one dialogue I, I, before we finish up on this. Yeah. Uh, there's one dialogue in that f- near the end there where Frere is basically explaining to Rodriguez why he, you know, gave up the faith. And, yeah. and he's just said like, listen, it's not, it's not that they don't believe in something higher than themselves or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that they just don't believe in what you believe in. And they're not disrespecting it. It's just they don't believe the same way. They believe in something. Yeah. I think that's a lot of what a lot of religion is. And of I, course. Yeah. So that's I thought that was like really well done. I, th- I heard that quote and I was like, yep, that's good. <laughs> that, that's a really good like it pushes the point across without being like offensive to anybody, I think. Yeah. I like that a lot. Me too. Uh, let's talk about Andrew Garfield and uh, mm-hmm. Adam Driver. Yes. At uh, Liam Neeson. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there are there are many great actors in this, uh, and uh, as well as as uh, Japanese uh, actors as well in, mm-hmm. in this. Um, if you have the names on hand, I honestly didn't take any notes. So. No worries. <laughs> I I for a fact here, I absolutely loved like the Inquisitor. Yeah. Uh, Inoue and the Interpreter. You know the yeah. the translator. Yes. Those two were, in my opinion, I think honestly the like they they fucking performed really good yeah they were good yeah absolutely <laughs> um, and the interpreter's name is i'm gonna butcher this i wish will was Go, here yeah. <laughs> uh tada nobu asano okay and then the uh inquisitor is isei ogata so they that's their names <laughs> good I, yeah. I i appreciate the effort yeah absolutely <laughs> uh no yeah everybody in this film was great hmm. Uh, I want to talk about Adam Driver a little bit uh, just because I feel like he wasn't used very much in this movie. And uh, I had happened to watch uh, <laughs> The Last Duel very close to watching uh, this one as well. And he plays, uh, they're not similar characters, but his accent is very similar <laughs> in both movies. So it was really <laughs> funny to see this. And I went, oh boy, like which one's a better performance? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like they're both fine, I guess. I don't know. I, I like Adam Driver. He's a, he has good films, uh, you know, but uh, I don't think this was like any of his like best work necessarily. No, uh, I agree. I, I think even for Andrew Garfield as well, I don't think it was his best work either. Uh, I think he was good in it, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I've seen better from him. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, you said same year as Hacksaw. Yeah. Same year. I don't know. Like <laughs> for, for me, honestly, I think for Andrew, I think I'm going to put like Hacksaw, then social network, then this movie. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. very fair. Yeah. I think that's my rating for Andrew's performance on this one. But he, yeah, he's still a phenomenal actor. Yeah. You know, he's still, he's British and he still pulls off like every dialect yeah. known to man without any issue. I don't know. Maybe British people just have like a, a thing for that and they're able to just do that without any effort or whatever. I can, I can do a British accent. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm Scottish too. I oh like, but uh, you know, I just like, I found that really interesting that, uh, I, I couldn't seem to like enjoy his performance necessarily, not to say that it's bad, but just it wasn't as good as maybe like his other ones. That's all. That's fair. Cause I, I have to, you know what? I kind of low key agree, specifically to, towards the end, um, like when he's really doing those like powerful emotional scenes in the end. He didn't feel super powerful. I don't know if that's just because I'm seeing Andrew Garfield and I'm seeing like like such a fun guy. Yeah, and like yeah, I just yeah. can't picture him like in pain, you know, or like or, I mean, not picture him in pain, but like picture him like portraying that like pain or portraying that like For you know sure, yeah. disbelief of what's happening. But um, I like that you touched on Adam Driver though, because even though it's not one of his best roles per se. I did enjoy his performance on here Mm -hmm. Um, because the way he portrays the character, specifically the, you know, his priest role uh, towards the beginning is is a bit like less of a, like less zealot, you know, kind of priest. Yeah. Um, And more so kind of like the one to break the rules. So, you know, you think of him at the end, um, well, towards the beginning, if you know that they're going to have to step on the step on Jesus, Mm -hmm. you think he might be the one to do it. Right, you yeah. like I don't know about you, but that's how I felt. Oh right? yeah, no, for sure. There's yeah. actually a point in the movie where um, I can't remember the exact dialogue, but he basically said, "Can we like can we defeat like when they were, when they came into the village and they were like, if you're not Christian, you won't have an issue with like 
spitting on the cross and you know calling yada yada i'm not going to say the the words but yeah. uh, basically d- you know uh, defacing uh your 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 religion yeah and so he, i forgot who who asked it but uh it said something along the lines are we allowed to like like do it for the sake of like uh, saving ourselves or something like that yeah. and then he basically like uh rodriguez said no uh, or yeah, no, Rodriguez said yes. And Grupe said, absolutely not. Like yeah. you have to stay there and like, you'll, you'll, you'll die for your sins or like, you know, or you'll have to sacrifice yourself essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not what I expected at all. Yeah, when exactly. I saw that. And then, um, I, I find it's just that, that specific change, um, specifically when you see Andrew Garfield seeing Adam driver for the first time, you know, well, it's, you know, seeing him for the first time after being separated. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that yeah. the Japanese had, had grabbed him and found him, yeah. right? Captured him. Um, and you just see Andrew Garfield, he's pretty much saying like, just say it, just like, just say that you don't believe, you know, yeah. he's saying it in, like from further away. But Adam Driver is the only priest uh, in this movie that pretty much died without saying, absolutely, you know, yeah. or without, mm-hmm. without uh, I think it's abstaining, right? Or um, uh, I forget the word. Oh yeah, my God. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, no, I, I, Oh man, it's You're gonna right. bug it's me. It's close. It's close to that word. It's, it's close, close to, to the it. word. Yeah. Oh man. Anyways, but you know, you know what I mean. Like you know, he pretty much he's the only priest that didn't take back the word of God. Yeah. You know, yeah, and like exactly. didn't uh, didn't deface him, didn't spit no, yeah. uh, on it, didn't step on him or anything like that. He's the only that died. Yeah. That fully like you know as a priest. Yeah. Uh, which I think was pretty cool to see, um, as his character, uh, mm-hmm. and his performance was I I think portrayed opposite, and then him actually dying like that was pretty good. I thought. It was mm-hmm. good, yeah. Uh, let's talk Liam Neeson here. Mm-hmm. Uh, not used very much in the movie. No. Uh, he doesn't need a lot of time to mm. really show an impact. I think his best scene is probably when... Uh, when um, I, got, I always mix up their names. When Rodriguez is <laughs> in the cell. Yes. For, uh, uh, near near the end of the movie there mm-hmm. and that's that's i mean that's where we see liam neeson the most obviously yeah uh but that's that scene there is the best i think of all of his scenes uh, he's pretty good in most of them but uh obviously that's where he gets real dialogue and he's allowed to actually show his range i mean mm-hmm. he doesn't need a lot you know that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean honestly i think this is um i i enjoyed liam neeson's performance a lot in this movie i don't know about you yeah i think it's up there it's not his best. That's that's separated for for Schindler's List. Yeah, I mean it's obviously not his best. But no. what I will say is, mm-hmm. he's able to do movies like this, yeah. and when he's given the opportunity to have proper a proper script and show his range, he can. I mean, let's be honest here. All these movies that he's been doing over the last couple of years yeah. aren't because he's like, oh, Hollywood's not giving me any good scripts. No, he's just yeah. like, I'm gonna make money where I can make money. Of course, which I respect. That's fine. Yeah, no issues there. But I hope at least if he decides to finally retire, if he could do one, give him give him a feature film where he can actually just do what he does best, you yeah. know, like, and it's not going to be, it's not going to be, you know, your, your, uh, your fun run around, kill everybody type movie, obviously, although they, they are, some of them are kind of fun to watch as, yeah. as dumb as they are. Uh, but uh, it will be a drama and, and uh, I really hope he gets one more shot at something that's really good. Me too. Because, uh, yeah. And in this movie, I was like, I kind of miss seeing him in something like of real substance. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember seeing him for the first time in a real like dark role or not dark role, but very important role was in Schindler's List. Yeah. And seeing him then and then going to watching like Taken right after, I was like, is this the same <laughs> guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I hope so. Let, let's let's get Liam Neeson one more uh, one more big shot, and yeah. uh, then he can retire for for good. Christopher Nolan, you want to grab him up yeah. there or something? <laughs> yeah, let's, I don't know what what uh, Christopher Nolan has in in store for him, but uh, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to Letterbox here. Yeah, uh, we're gonna take a look at just like last episode where we take a look at the lower ratings of this. I think this one will be more interesting because I don't think we're as high on. Uh, uh, on on praise for this movie necessarily, we're yep. pretty. Uh, I'd say I give it uh, three and a half stars just because the second half is a lot better than the first half. Like I was saying, mm-hmm. so kind of saved the movie for me. Uh, Cinematography is great, as we talked yep. about. Or uh, uh, we'll dive into it a little bit more. Uh, but uh, just in general, that's what saved it from being probably three stars on the dot, or maybe even less. Hard to say. But uh, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, two star reviews. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, I'm trying to find some that have some pretty good writing. I don't know about this one. You want to read this one out here? Let's take a look. Is that too bright? Let me just, nope, that's good. Go. All right. So despite their significant differences in depicting reality, a shared characteristic among American filmmakers is their perspective on non-European nations and cultures. Across generations from Friedman Zinnemann's, uh, I don't know if I got that right, The Nun's Story to Nicholas Ray's 55 Days at Peking and Martin Scorsese's Silence, a consistent theme emerges. These filmmakers often use a manipulative and react reactionary narrative that downplays the historical brutality and negative consequences of colonialism often justified in the name of spreading Christianity to other nations. Let's see what else they wrote. Yeah. Is it important? Let's see. Uh, uh, it's a, yeah, give yeah, it a read. I'll give it a read. <laughs> uh, even in Scorsese's films, uh, which tries to provide a balanced portrayal between subjugated Japanese people and European colonial and Christian invaders, there remains a romanticized con conservatism associated with the notion of Christianity. Anyway, this recurring theme in American cinema, observed over generations, has been largely neglected by cinephiles. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Do you have any first uh, impressions of that? I mean, listen, I get it. But I think he actually, I think Martin Scorsese's play, well, not play, but like the way he like used Christianity in this was actually very good. I, I, I find it's not like, it's not a romanticized version of Christianity. No, no, not no, at all. Absolutely not. Um, you know, it's, it's not a romanticized version of Christianity or Buddhism, um, which he didn't mention at all. Uh, but I, I enjoy the comment, I guess. I mean, I, I understand it, but I don't think it's romanticized. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> I asked you cause I really didn't have anything to say to this. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's an interesting story dealt with serious consequences and real, real, uh, life changing events. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's no way, there's no other way to really perceive this. Of course, there are always ways to romanticize it. But even then, I mean, it's just like, how do you romanticize a story like this? I mean, it's, oh I'd be God. impressed if you were able to, honestly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Wow, there are some people who really write a bunch of stuff. Oh my God, uh, yeah. No way this many people uh, rocked with Silence by Scorsese. This was a slog till the last half hour. But that half hour did bump. Uh, bump my opinion of the film for real some points deeply hilarious to see american adam driver and british andrew garfield try to cover try to coverage yeah the, uh, oh, converge. Oh, converge there yeah. it is uh converge into the half-assed uh portuguese accent uh which for drivers sounded italian american <laughs> and for garfield deeply non-committal i think that says yeah not committal yeah in every line Oh, okay. I see what they mean. Yeah. And to uh, to see Liam Neeson not attempt a, fa a fake accent at all <laughs> with a heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Liam Neeson looks like a Qui-Gon again, uh, which was dope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair. Uh, enjoy the reoccurring image of pleading eyes emoji Jesus. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly the scene where Garfield was crazy and looking at the reflection of the river. Um they superimpose <laughs> they superimpose anime Jesus onto Garfield's reflection <laughs> was very <laughs> what is this for me? High School Musical oh, 2 <laughs> oh no oh it is <laughs> High School Musical 2 Troy Bolton thumbs, thumbs up, up. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to read the last part there that's not important to this uh, but uh, yeah no uh, that was an interesting um, uh, review uh, yeah. it's a little fun there as well with with some of the i like letterbox sometimes they get they have some really creative reviews yeah. i like that uh but um I, this person seems to have a similar opinion to me uh, mm -hmm. i wouldn't say the last 30 minutes was bad or, or, or the the best part about it i should say it was more uh you know before that add like another 30 minutes to that uh, i said an hour but uh, overall i i, I totally see where he's getting his opinions from like i'm not surprised either yeah the the accents weren't great I, that's why i said it's not andrew's best performance it's yeah. not uh adam driver's best performance either uh but i don't think their their performances were or their accents for that matter were enough to like throw you out of the movie at all yeah you, they do have to be pretty strong because i mean you're telling me these guys are portuguese and you can't pull that off even to the slightest of course my ear isn't attuned to to that uh, accent so maybe my interpretation is very different yeah uh but uh i had no issues with it yeah no i thought it was okay i thought it was good um same thing as you it didn't throw me off the accent yeah. i mean i 
The first time I heard Andrew Garfield's voice, I was kind of like, oh, wait, that's not his regular voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's it. Uh, Other than that, I was like, okay, I get it. You know, he's trying to put on an accent. Um, But the anime Jesus comment, I love it. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, and then uh, I like the Liam Neeson one there, uh, which is great as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Good overall comment. Uh, we'll give it uh, one more shot. Let's go lower here. Let's go yep. to a one star. This is going to be our last uh, one here. Yep. One star. Let's, Let's, see, Let's see what it is. Okay. Can letterbox work? There we go. <laughs> Let's read that one. Uh, yeah. Let's just go with this one right yeah. here. All right. Uh, man, I really wanted to like this movie as it was by the famous Scorsese. And it stars Andrew Garfield, who I was a huge fan of in Spider-Man. And Liam Neeson, who is my favorite actor. Oh, nice. Uh, It's an interesting film concept, and I really wanted to be interested in the plot, but I just couldn't get through it. So much of this film is spent on things I feel were just simply not necessary. I will make it very clear, I did not finish this film. Okay. I got about halfway through and couldn't do it anymore. I ended up getting bored multiple times throughout the first half of the movie and decided it wasn't for me. If you love this film, I'm glad you do. I wish I did. I skimmed around to see what happens and saw some really good scenes between Garfield's character and Neeson's character, and the ending was cool. But it just took too long and didn't feel like the length was necessary. I'm going to try more Scorsese in the future, but this one was not for me. Mm. I think it's a fair. That's that's an extremely fair response. It's a fair response. I find if I'm watching a movie, I will usually finish it. So I don't justify his one star. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 at least I, I appreciate the honesty and said that yeah, he didn't finish true. it and he skimmed through it, which yeah. changes the way a movie is perceived. Mm-hmm. So I totally get that because you, you lose the highs and lows of the movie if you don't actually sit through like the, because everyone could just watch a montage of like the most impactful parts of some movies and stuff yeah. like that, right? But you, you lose like the craft of, of a film, you know, there's always going to be slow parts and maybe there's a reason behind a, a slower portion of the movie that's because it builds up to the really good parts, right? So that's just how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I, I think overall, I think I agree with the length. I feel like maybe the story could have definitely have just maybe cut off a part here and there and whatever, and we would have probably gotten the same impact. Yeah. Uh, but it's Scorsese and he won't leave, you know, time to be the reason he doesn't want to add stuff you know yeah. he if he can make a four or five hour movie he would so 100% uh, he would. you know it's it's fine I, I like how he says i'm going to try more scorsese in the future uh but this one wasn't for him i don't know which scorsese movie you're going to watch that isn't like a three hour <laughs> thrill like you know so like <laughs> good luck trying to find something that's you know not uh entirely i don't remember the last movie of his that isn't like a, a absolute i'm thinking of the one with tom cruise where he plays pool oh yeah oh uh, man Oh, I'm blanking on that. I'm blanking give it a, as give well. Give it a Google here. I'm Googling right now. Okay. It's, uh, oh, The Color of Money. Oh, right. Yes, but that's right. It's two hours on the dot. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Probably one of Scorsese's shorter films. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Uh, great director, obviously, mm-hmm. and will always do great work. Uh, yeah. Wonder what's his next after Flower. Uh, yeah, Flower Kills of Flower. Yeah, I... I that title is too long, just like the movie. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about some of the cinematography. Yes. Because uh, it's it's really the... I say it's a saving grace of this movie in mm. a lot of ways. It, it definitely keeps your attention when, yeah. when there are parts where you might not want to be listening anymore. There's a lot of dialogue. Uh, so what are, what are some shots that come to your mind immediately? The first shot that comes to my mind right away is when there are the three main... Um, what do they call? It? I guess the followers, the three main religious people that get basically hung up on the on the uh, yeah as a, like crucified yeah, and you kind of see them from like a back shot, and you see them all three like crucified with the sea in the background. Yes, honestly, amazing yes. shot. You know, it really just puts the whole perspective of the sea just coming, you know, destroy just, them. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, boy, that's... That, it's it was incredible, mm-hmm. very powerful like shot. Even like yeah. even if you just had that shot, you know what's happening. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, it is very good. It was incredible. I honestly, I forget the name of this uh, cinematographer, but I know he did do the same cinematography for The Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. So they have had projects together yeah, before. Makes sense. But yeah, I mean, what about you? What's your first shot that's like, you know, comes to your head as soon as I mean, I yeah, say that it? was, that was one for sure. <laughs> absolutely. That's one that sticks with you. Absolutely. Uh, there's, uh, there's a, sh- there's the shots where he, uh, where um, Rodriguez is sitting in front of the, uh, I guess it's the, panel of people and he like when he wants to meet the inquisitor and he doesn't know mm-hmm. that uh that he's already there that he's present yeah uh th- those shots there were i guess he's in the the the, the uh, i want to say 
camp, but it's like, I guess it's base, the base uh, yeah. that's uh, there. Uh, some of those shots are really good because you get like uh, these really great angles where it's, you could see like just over the wall of uh, of the base and then you can see like ranges of mountain and it's just so nice. And yeah. it's always like, like overcast with like fog and it's just like a lot of those shots are really, really, really good. And I, I really like those yeah. uh, a lot. One that I think that's really underrated uh, and it's so simple is really just when uh, Ferreira has this conversation with uh, Rodriguez. It's not even complicated. They're just two people sitting there and having a conversation back and forth. But like, you know, with the sun coming up and he points at the sun, like the, just the colors and everything. I really liked the, that whole sequence there for, I don't know why. It was just really it was, good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was crazy. And then they're also going back to the translator and then the, yeah. the other person that brought in uh, that's Leeson. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I really, really liked it. Um. I think another kind of shot that like just comes to my head as soon as you like you say shot is I guess like when they're when Andrew Garfield's pulling into the um oh my god I'm gonna blank here on the name of the island but I think it's Ghetto Goto yeah uh, when it's the uh, Ch- Kichiro's uh, main island or main main city or yeah main, you know village I guess mm-hmm. when he's pulling in he's like is that Goto you know and then he kind of yeah. you're you're in the boat you're seeing what he's seeing and you just see the whole island is like destroyed and everything I yeah. I really like that as well I guess I don't know I just I really like those far shots. <laughs> yeah, no, it's but, a, it's an amazing uh, landscape. Yeah, uh, every shot like to show like just the and in the works within the movie, right? Yeah. We talk about uh, Japanese and their connection with nature. When you show the grandeur of of the place that they live in and, and how uh, lush the forests are and the and the, like the bodies of water and just like everything about it, it's just it's amazing to look at. You're like, wow, yeah, like, that's crazy. The only other shot that I thought was kind of interesting, uh, not one that actually takes place in Japan, one that takes place before uh, Rodriguez and uh, uh, Garupe leave, uh, is there. Uh, I don't even know the name of the guy who sent them, yeah. but regardless, uh, they all three of them walked down the staircase. And I, fo- I thought it was pretty interesting that they decided to use sort of a left to right shot with that, like overhead left to right. So it's a very awkward one because they're going downstairs and they should be getting. S- smaller on the screen but they're not because of the perception it's it, it's a really weird shot but yeah. it, just as a as just as a weird fun shot that i didn't really expect from a scorsese movie necessarily i, I liked it yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Odd. oh man there's such amazing shots in this movie that are i just like you said just keep you really hooked in uh yeah. when you wouldn't necessarily be hooked in for the long dialogue yeah um what about favorite scenes you know like i mean shots are Shots are, you know, build up a lot. Yeah, you know, I but mean, I, I guess like they go hand in hand, right? Yeah, so, they like, go. Yeah, yeah. I could much. say the same thing over and over again with all that. I just <laughs> repeat it again. But uh, man, favorite scenes. I mean, obviously, uh, we talked about the the Liam Neeson and uh, and Andrew Garfield yeah. uh, in the cell. Yeah, that's, that's really, true. really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, uh, you're going to have to give me a bit of time here. Go for yours. OK, <laughs> um, when I think of favorite scene, honestly, in here, I think of uh, of two. So the first one I'm thinking of is um, I'm pretty sure his name was Mokichi, which is the um, which is the the main guy that survived for the longest. I think it was four days uh, when he was. Crucified. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that was probably one of my favorite scenes when he's pretty much just taking it all in and he's praying. And all of a sudden from praying, he goes to um, to singing, singing a hymn. I think he's singing. Yes. Um, and then um, I think the narrator comes in and says he's like singing. Mm-hmm. Everybody's watching. And you're just yeah. like, in I silence. don't know. Yeah, it was. So good. I, I I was like sitting at the edge of my seat at that point in time because I was like, yeah. holy crap. No, that, that whole sequence is really good. Yeah. Really, I, really good. I was a bit speechless. I was just watching it and watching it. I was just like, oh, crap. Like, yeah, I, I, you can just picture what they're kind of going through, right? Imagine, right? Yeah. It's it's intense. And honestly, that's my number one, I think, favorite scene in the movie. Um, It's like you just really see that intensity of how far the Japanese are willing to go. Yeah. You know, um, and how deep their religion is, too. You know, you get to see like the, the believers and their religion is so strong that they're willing to die on the cross. Yeah. Like their savior did. Yeah. And then you're also seeing the other side is just going to so many lengths just to get them away from their belief. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah Absolutely yeah. incredible. That's, I think, my probably my favorite scene in the movie. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's a fantastic shot. Yeah. Uh, all of it, every uh, the dialogue and everything like that, the way it's done. And then even at near the end of that scene, when he finally dies on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the body just doesn't doesn't just fall off and get swept away into the sea. He gets tangled with the rope and yeah. he, he's still stuck to it, oh, almost man. still grasping onto the faith. And then yeah, and then I I think the best 
uh, part of that is uh, the older guy. I can't remember his name, but mm-hmm. he dies first on the cross yeah. in that scene. And then um, they kind of just say like, you know, like, we know he's gone. So like, please accept, you know, accept him, uh, you know, uh, you know, and uh, we'll see you there essentially. And yeah. Then, we'll like, see you in just, uh, Paraiso. Yeah, that's right. right yeah. yeah. Oh, there, there's a lot of really great scenes. And honestly, I, I don't know if there's like one particularly to me that like, I'm like, wow, this was really good. Other than mm-hmm. the one, obviously you said yeah. the one we spoke about earlier uh, in the cell. Uh, I don't know. I, I find most shots and most scenes dialogue are pretty good. There mm. isn't a necessary moment where I'm like, well, that was pretty bad. I don't know why that was made into <laughs> the movie. I don't think yeah. uh, Scorsese movies have the capability of necessarily doing that. Uh, if anything, they're kind of like weird shots, but you're like, okay, it was just like, it was weird, but it was still good, you know? Yeah. So uh, I can't put my finger on any particular scenes because you just named like Fair pretty enough, much <laughs> the one that's good, obviously. Uh, I would say... If I had to put one more, I would say I found the pretty stomach twisting one was where they pull out like the five people from their cells uh, in the camp and uh, they say, okay, like step on the face of your God. And so they try and they refuse, they try to refuse, they try to refuse. And then like, you're kind of like, they, they start to put them back into their cells and then you're like, well, what was the whole point of that scene? They're not even going to torch them or anything. That's like, yeah. it's not like the whole kind of purpose of this is they're not going to step on. Is that all you really want them to do? And then it stops. And then out of nowhere, this guy just comes out of nowhere, and just chops his head off. Mm-hmm. Just, huh, I was like, huh, okay, that's pretty <laughs> gruesome. And then it just rolls up into frame. And I was like, okay, this is a bit much. And like, and then, and then it just a nice little pan shot and they just drag the body. You see the blood all mm-hmm. the way over. It's, yeah. it's a pretty gruesome scene. If you're pretty easy to, to squeam- squeamishness and you're, you're not easy with blood, it's not that bloody, but just like the impact of it and like the way that they showed it is kind yeah. of like, oh boy, like there's no like filling in the gap. They just show you one for one what just happened. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And then they just, yeah, they drag the body off and they have a pit re- ready for somebody. Which they had dug the night before. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. Yes, yeah. that's true. There was a scene right before. Yes, that is true. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that was, that's the only other scene that I could think of that pops in my head right away. Yeah. No, that's really, really good. I remember it specifically like Andrew Garfield's reaction right after that. Yes. I remember good. that very, very specifically. Yes. Specifically, like him screaming, he's like slapping or s- smacking around, yes, you know, in the right. cell. That was really good. That yeah. was really good. There's like a couple little portions where you're just like, okay, that's really good. Yeah. 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 Where is it in the rest of the film? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's right? like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Low key, for but sure, for he's sure. still really good. Yeah. I mean, you savor those moments and stuff like that. Yeah. The only, I guess, like the only, speaking of bad parts of the movie, I guess the only one that made me kind of laugh out loud is when he did have the reflection in the water when he, when they find before he just got captured. Yeah. He, I, I just, I don't know. I had to laugh at it. It was the most, the weirdest acting I've ever seen, uh, out of Garfield. And I just kind of looked there and I was like, what the hell did I just look at? I like, I get it. He's like, he's, he's, he's lost. He hasn't, he hasn't eaten anything, which is a yeah. huge thing. I don't think a lot of people really think very much about how how much your your body obviously relies on food and stuff like that and we do see that he gets fed uh a bit in the camp but yeah we do also see that he gives away food uh as well in, in it so it's like does he's really eating so mm-hmm. uh his sanity is that question uh and then yeah that scene with the reflection just kind of made me laugh i was like that was i was like i get it it's important but like i don't know it's just like the way he did it made me kind of go all right well at least that's over with next and then <laughs> and so i don't know i just thought it was kind of funny i get it i i get it but i also think that was like a very crucial scene <laughs> so i don't I know the crucial scene <laughs> I, I knew it was a crucial scene, but uh, I just, I, I just felt like I don't know the the way he was like seeing himself reflecting off the water, or yeah. like himself, and then he sees the image of of Jesus. Yeah, it's kind of like I, in my opinion, I thought it was like, and him losing his sanity right after. Yeah, it was like him seeing himself as Jesus. Yes, and that's, that's the point of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. But then it's like it's more so his whole his whole belief of, am I Jesus? Am yes. I? And he starts questioning himself, right? I guess. Yeah like internally and like am i jesus are people following me are people dying for my sins like am i like what am i doing you know I mean, like yeah you know it's it's, <laughs> so, a, yeah. it's that whole thing and i think i don't know i found specifically that one part where he's like seeing himself and then he sees the reflection of jesus and then he starts you know laughing hysterically yeah and smacking himself in his head in the water and stuff yeah. like that which when it was a little far i think it's just him just being you know shocked that he just saw something like that you know it's for sure for yeah. sure but i i do get no, i like, do yeah, get yeah. it i get it yeah <laughs> no, it, it's just it's the only part of the movie where i'm just like 
okay, that was that was like <laughs> not like it kind of pulled me a little bit out of the movie, mm-hmm. but like not for long enough for it to like ruin the rest of the movie or anything like that. Yeah. So overall, it was a good movie. I I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. These movies are always fun. I, I they they always surprise me. It's a hard story to tell, and it's yeah. a hard one to keep people interested. But uh, was it two hours and forty five minutes? Uh, two hours forty two. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> sorry. So sorry, my bad. my bad. Sorry, guys. Remember, it's 2.42, not 45. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Any final thoughts on it? No, honestly, no, not really final thoughts, I guess. I'm just excited to see. Uh, we still haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see. Same thing, right? Scorsese. Same, you know, just very much. Not not that it's every time you don't call a movie, a movie that's not action, I guess you can always call it a slower story, right? Because yeah. action's so packed and there's always something to to be doing right but uh scorsese knows what he's doing we've seen his work so i'm not really concerned i'll definitely watch the movie before the oscars i want to <laughs> say if not like around the oscars for sure yeah definitely all right so i think we're gonna leave it there for today uh lots 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 that we talked about so uh make sure you subscribe if you're new uh leave a like and comment down below if you've seen the movie and uh, if you are uh, a fan of it or, or any scorsese movie that you might think is better uh go ahead and comment down below as always make sure you leave uh, uh here with the notification bell that lovely thing uh enabled so that you can get updates of when we post uh we'll be keeping you guys up to date on any changes that are happening on the channel one change that is happening on the channel at the moment is we do not have will here as you might have noticed uh he will be appearing in other videos he is currently traveling he's having some fun uh uh, leaving us behind uh unfortunately Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but uh he will be appearing in uh other videos uh so he won't be gone uh forever uh and he will return hopefully uh ready to go for more episodes it's gonna be refreshed maybe i need a break too we should go on vacation <laughs> oh, we'll leave will to record along oh boy <laughs> uh, but uh yeah that's about it for us today and uh, we appreciate you all and thank you very much thank you